Well, the problem, the problem isn't the debt ceiling. The problem is the debt itself. I mean, if anything, the ceiling would be a solution if it was actually real. The problem is it's not really a ceiling. It's more like a target that we, you know, the government tries to hit the debt ceiling target, and then as soon as they hit it, they raise the target so they can hit it again. Uh, but this is a false crisis in that if we don't raise the debt ceiling, then we've got a default. The fact of the matter is if we keep raising the debt ceiling, we'll have no choice but to default. That is the real uh, the danger. See, right now we're talking about our own willingness to borrow, and that's an arbitrary uh, decision we've made. We don't want to borrow anymore, but we can always decide we want to borrow more if we raise the debt ceiling. At some point, we, ran, we run into a ceiling that we can't raise, and that's the lending ceiling. That's because our creditors don't want to loan us any more money. You know, that, that's the problem they're having in Greece right now. They're having it in, 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 uh, in, in Ireland or any of these countries. They're willing to borrow, just that nobody is willing to lend at an interest rate that they can afford. That's the problem. Well, we're going to have the same problem. The one difference being we can print money. So we can default in an, through another vehicle, right? Instead of refusing to pay, we can pay with money that has very little bu buying power. And so from the perspective of our creditors, that's the same thing as a default. If we, if we pay our creditors money that has little value, that's the same thing as not getting all your money back, as you're not getting all your purchasing power back either way. And I think that is the real danger that we face if we keep raising the debt ceiling because there's too much, we've borrowed too much money. It's impossible to pay it back. I think we've actually already gotten to that point. I think we already, already owe more where default is inevitable, even if we don't borrow any more, because eventually interest rates are going to rise. And when they do, we will not be able to make the payments on the interest, let alone the principal, unless we make draconian cuts uh, to other government programs. And politically, I don't see how that's feasible. I don't see how our leaders are going to tell voters in America that you have to have big cuts in Social Security, big cuts in Medicare, big cuts in government pensions to preserve uh, the interest in principal payments to the Chinese or to the Saudis or to the Japanese or anybody else that we owe money to. It's just not going to happen. No politician is going to put a non-voter ahead of a voter. So this is, the default is inevitable. The question is, what form does it take? Is it legitimate default where we admit that we can't pay? Or do we just pretend we can pay and print money? I think it's the latter. And the problem there is not only do we wipe out people who hold treasuries, but if the U.S. government defaults through inflation, everybody gets wiped out who owns dollar-denominated bonds, whether you own a muni bond or a corporate bond or just have money stuck under, stuck under your mattress. You lose because that money loses value. So the losses are much more widespread when the default takes the form of inflation. I mean, what really what we should be doing right now is not raising the debt ceiling and dramatically cutting government spending so that we don't have to default. Although I do believe that we need much higher interest rates in this country right now. I think part of the problem that's undermining our economy is that interest rates are too low. The reason they're being kept artificially low is so that we can you know, pretend that we can afford to pay the debt that we have. It's try tr we're trying to prop up the government, the financial institutions, the housing market, but we can't have a viable economy until we stop doing that. We have to let housing prices fall. We have to let insolvent banks fail. We have to rebuild our savings. We need an interest rate that encourages people to save and that allocates capital productively to Main Street, to manufacturing and productions, not simply to speculators on Wall Street. But in order to do that, we have to raise interest rates. But if we raise interest rates, then the government is going to be in a situation where it can't afford the, uh, the payments on the national debt. So ultimately, I think we do need to restructure the debt because I do not believe in its current form it can be fully paid. And I think if we're going to ask people who have been made promises with respect to Social Security or Medicare to give up money, to, to, to accept a less than they've been promised, I don't think it makes sense to make all of our creditors whole. After all, you know, they were enablers uh, China, Japan, they bought a lot of our debt. Um, that enabled our government to grow so large. Had they been more responsible and refused to lend, 
uh, we couldn't have dug ourselves into such a deep hole. So I think it is, it is, it is unfair to ask all the sacrifice to come from you know, people who are counting on Social Security checks. I think people who are counting on uh, their coupons on their treasuries, they also have to uh, put up you know, you know, a, a certain amount of sacrifice so that we can reduce the debt to a manageable level. But the key is to stop accumulating more debt. Right? When you're in a hole, you want to stop digging. And raising the debt ceiling is let's dig the hole even deeper. And it's amazing that you've got the, you know, the President and the Secretary of the Treasury will acknowledge how big a problem the national debt is, yet they're saying it's a crisis if we don't agree to make it bigger. And they talk about how devastating it would be if we were to default, yet their actions guarantee default. You know, today, right now, we don't have to default because interest rates are still low enough that we can postpone that. But if we were to default now, it wouldn't be because we failed to raise the debt ceiling. It would be because Congress or the President decided that they wanted to default. It's not something that they're going to be forced into. They'd have to actively make, make the decision. But ultimately, there is a crisis coming in America. There is, a, there is a sovereign debt crisis, a currency crisis. It's going to happen. But it's not going to happen because we failed to raise the debt ceiling. It's going to happen because we succeed in raising the debt ceiling.